So do you earn a good income but find yourself living paycheck to paycheck? Or do you find yourself overspending or taking on unnecessary debts even though you have a good income? What are your biggest concerns about your spending? Well, if you have any of these questions in your mind, this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about how to start living below your means to achieve your financial goals. Keep watching. Hi everyone, my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. I'm also the author of the Clever Girl Finance book series and my most recent book, Choosing to Prosper. Welcome to Clever Girl Finance TV. So today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create a financial plan for yourself to help you start living below your means, especially if you find yourself in that place where you're earning a good income, but your money still finds ways to slip through your fingers. So we're gonna start by looking at how you currently spend your money. There are some key indicators that will let you know that you are living well above your means, and the sooner you're able to identify these key indicators in your life, the quicker you're able to create your plan to help you start living below your means. So some signs that you are living above your means despite earning a good income include number one, you don't have an emergency savings fund, number two, you have credit card debt, Number three, you're not saving at least 10% of your income. Number four, you're purchasing big ticket items despite your finances. Number five, you're paying for expensive vacations you didn't plan for. If you can relate to any of these indicators, I'm going to be sharing some key tips to help you get past them and start living below your means and also saving more money. So step one, you want to assess your financial situation. You essentially want to determine where do you stand right now when it comes to your finances? Where is your money going? And you want to look at your bank statements, your credit card statements over the last three to six months to get a good idea of where your money is going. Where are you spending this money? Even those small expenses, you want to pay attention to them. So once the first thing you want to do is get clear on your current situation by determining where your money is going, highlighting those key expenses, and then determining your income and comparing your income to those expenses. A lot of people think they know what they earn, but they actually don't know because they haven't paid attention to that full number. They're basing it on their annual salary before taxes come out, right? So how much do you really earn after taxes on an annual basis? How much do you really earn after taxes when you get paid each month or every two weeks? Or if you have an inconsistent income, what is the average um, income that you earn after you've put aside your expenses? You want to be aware of this. You want to compare your income to your expenses and determine how much of your expenses are going over your income, right? How much are you spending beyond your income? Once you've done this assessment to see where your money is going and how much you are overspending by, then you are ready for step number two. Step number two is to create a budget. This is essential to being able to live below your means. And when you create your budget, you want to break your budget into categories. For example, you can have a category in your budget for your future self where you're saving for retirement. You have your debt payoff goals in there as well. You need a category for your essentials. These are the things that are essential for you to live your life. Uh, you may have a category for your life goals. So these are the things that you want to achieve outside of saving for your future self. And then you can also have a category for everything else where you pay attention to what you're spending, whether it's eating out, traveling, shopping, etc., so that you're not spending beyond your means. And this category will help you stay in check. So it's important that you lay out a budget now based on your income and based on your expenses. And as you lay out your budget, you may find opportunities to cut things out because you realize that, wait a minute, I did my spending assessment and I realized that I actually don't need to spend money on these things anymore, or I can temporary cut, temporarily cut back from spending money on these things. So it's really important that once you do that assessment, that you then sit down and create a budget. And there are many different budgeting methods. It's all about finding a budget method that works for you. So some budgeting methods include the cash envelope system, zero-based budgeting, um, percentage-based budgeting, or using an app or spreadsheet. And you can start by clevergirlfinance.com. We have tons of articles on all these different budgeting methods. We also have several free budgeting worksheets in our worksheet library that you can find on our website. And then if you feel more comfortable budgeting with an app, go to your smartphone's app store and download a bunch of budgeting apps and then go through them, take some time to go through them to see which of them uh, you prefer to use and will work best for your lifestyle. The key to successful budgeting after you've built your budget is checking in and finding a budgeting method that you enjoy using so that you can check in often. 
And then step number three is to create a financial plan. So you know where your money is going. You know how you're spending your money. You've created a budget to help you keep your uh, spending below your income. But now you want to create a financial plan, a plan of your long-term and your short-term goals that you want to achieve in your life. This is really important to have. This is also tied to your purpose and your fulfillment. And so your financial plan will include things like your goals, your debt payoff plan, your emergency savings plan, your investment plans, and even an estate plan. This is essentially your overall plan to achieve financial wellness for yourself, starting with those short-term, mid-term, and then your long-term goals. You can use financial planning apps or templates or worksheets. Like I mentioned, we have over 40 plus free worksheets on clevergirlfinance.com. It doesn't matter what tool you use to set up your financial plan. It can be a simple uh, spreadsheet or work do Word document, but it is essential that you lay it out so you know what goals you're going to be pursuing and you know why you want to stay motivated and inspired to work your plan uh, and live below your means. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would love for you to hit the like button below and subscribe to this channel and then tell all your best girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance. Then stop by our website at clevergirlfinance.com. We have over 30 plus completely free courses, over 40 plus completely free worksheets like I mentioned, and our blog gets updated every single day. And you can also tune into the Clever Girls Know podcast everywhere you listen to your podcast episodes. Okay, let's get back to this video on living below your means. And then step number four is to curb your spending. And so this is not an intentional act you're going to take, an intentional action you're going to take to minimize how much you're spending, especially in unnecessary areas so that you can get to the point where you're living below your means. And one way to do this is with a spending journal. And you can do this for a couple of weeks or for a month where you have this journal, whether a physical book or the notes app in your smartphone, and you write down what you're spending every single day. And in addition, you write down where your mind was, was at what your mindset was, how you were feeling when you were making that transaction, especially the ones that are not tied to your essentials. And at the end of the night, you want to review your spending. This just helps you be mindful of what you're spending money on and helps you make better choices the next day. So you want to be intentionally focused on cutting down on your spending. Maybe you're spending too much money shopping or eating out or at your coffee store, whatever you're doing that you find is excessive, that is causing you to live above your means you want to be intentional about catching yourself in those moments so that you can adjust that choice and make a better choice so that you can start living below your means number five consider living frugally. And one thing I want to say about living frugally is that it's not about being cheap. It's about looking at a new way of life that allows you to save money. That is what being frugal is about. You can still have quality, great items, make quality purchases, um, but instead you're focusing on how can I save? Where can I cut back? What is worth it and what is not? And so living fr frugally is one way that you can focus on living below your means. So for example, instead of always buying brand new clothes, you might decide to focus on making a list of things that you need that are missing your wardrobe, for example, if you do need to shop and then looking at the pre-owned market for high quality items. A lot of times you're going to find brand new items from brands that you love, but at an incredible discount because they are considered pre-owned. And so you want to explore options in which you can save by living frugally. Another example of living frugally is looking at coupons, finding coupons online or browsing your grocery store's website or app before you uh, plan your grocery shopping so that you know where you can save, right? You're still buying the same groceries, the same brand names that you like, but now you're getting a discount because you intentionally went out and found some coupons to help you save on that grocery bill. And then step number six, you want to focus on improving your money mindset. And this basically means that as opposed to thinking of living below your means as a restriction, think about it as a pathway to your financial wellness. Think about it as a pathway to being able to improve your life. You want to think positively about your finances and your goals and empower yourself with words and affirmations that make you know that you are able to achieve what you have set yourself up to achieve. You don't want to dwell on the past or past mistakes and start to feel regretful and discouraged yourself from even taking action because you have made mistakes. Instead, take a look at your past 
assess the lessons from those mistakes and then let it go and apply those lessons to your future. And so it's really important that you have that positive money mindset where you think positively about your finances, even if you are in the process of paying off debt, even if you're in the process of living below your means, even if you're in the process of rebuilding your emergency savings, think positively about your finances. And this will keep you inspired and motivated to keep moving forward. And then number seven, step seven is find ways to make extra money. And so when you're in this space where you're trying to live below your means, you may find that, okay, you have cut back as much as you can cut back, but your expenses still happen to be high and you can't adjust them right away. For example, you may be tied to an expensive mortgage or rental lease that you cannot break immediately. And so this might be one of the hindrances uh, causing you not to be able to live below your means right away. And so one way you can get past this is by making additional money, bringing in extra income. This means uh, being intentional about perhaps asking for a raise at work, finding a part-time job, starting a side hustle, selling things in your kitchen, in your closet, your kids' items that you no longer need or like or want to bring in extra income that you can put towards helping you live below your means. When you have that extra money to spare, it helps you be at peace because you now have this buffer, you now have this additional income that you can put towards even things like saving and investment as you focus on living below your means. And then step number eight, utilize financial courses and resources. So when you decide that you're ready to make a change with your finances. You're ready to become more focused and intentional about how you're spending your money so you can live below your means. It can feel overwhelming because you're making all this change and it can also feel really uncomfortable because it's not what you're used to doing. You're used to just spending and spending. And so you want to leverage resources. Like I mentioned, we have the Clever Girl Finance platform. We have tons of videos here on YouTube that you can reference to help you stay motivated and keep your mind on track. You can take one of our 30 plus free courses. You can check out our worksheets. You can check out our podcast and you can check out the Clever Girl Finance books to help you stay focused on your goals. In addition, YouTube and other social media have really, really awesome financial communities that you can participate in and follow so that you can stay focused on what it is you're trying to achieve. So it's all about making sure that you are sticking to your intention of living below your means. And it is totally possible if you stay focused and you stay motivated. You can even make it fun by making a challenge or participating in money challenges around savings or paying off debt. Or you can have a friend join you on this goal, on this path to living below your means and have them keep you accountable. I would love for you to share in the comments, what specific things are you doing right now to help you live below your means so that you can put that money that you, you don't need to spend right uh, towards saving, investing, or paying off debt. Share in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your best girlfriends about Clever Girl Finance, and then stop by our website at clevergirlfinance.com and check out all of our awesome free resources. I will talk to you next time. <music>